Hello and welcome to Starfish Maths. My name's Sarah and today I want to look at the R addition formula. This is when you take a sum of sine and cos and combine them into a single expression. We'll begin by looking at how to do that with a couple of examples and then I'll show you a couple of exam style questions. As ever, please do grab a pen and paper, pause, rewind and fast forward the video as you need to work at your own pace. I hope this is helpful. Let's get started. So the R addition formula is when you're given something like this on the left hand side and you're asked to put it into this kind of form, either with sine or cos. Um, it, it, some people worry about whether to use sine or cos and typically it doesn't really matter actually but um, in an exam question they would tell you what they want. So let's start off by putting this in the form of R sine. We start with the only thing we can do really, and that's using the addition formula to expand out this bracket on the right hand side. If you haven't seen my video yet on the addition formula, then maybe go and have a look at that first. Otherwise, let's expand this side. I've rewritten the left hand side here just so I can have a look and compare both sides. And what I like to do is underline what's common on both sides. So sine x is common here. So because we've got an equal sign in the middle, we know that that term has to equal that term. So the bits around sine x must equal each other. So we've got 2 on this side, and on this side we've got r cos alpha. And that gives us our first equation, that 2 equals r cos alpha. Just for clarity, I'll use a different colour here now um, and underline cos x on both sides and pick out another equation using the bits around cos x. So now we've got 3 is r sine alpha. Now because these simultaneous equations have got tri trigonometry in, you use different methods than you would have done with other simultaneous equations. What we're going to use are the two basic trig identities. So the first one is that sine squared plus cos squared is 1. And the other one is sine over cos is tan. And I really like this, I think it's quite beautiful and clever. Um, what I'll do is I'll label up the two equations. And first of all, we'll use the identity that... <laughs> we'll use the identity that sine squared plus cos squared is 1. So because they're squared and added together, that's what, exactly what we're going to do to these equations. We're going to square them and add them together. So on the left hand side we'll have 2 squared plus 3 squared and on this side we'll have r squared cos squared. So that gives us 13 on the left hand side and on the right hand side I'm going to take r squared out as a factor because it's common in both terms. And then you can see here you've got sine squared plus cos squared which as we know from the identity is 1. So basically that's r squared times 1, that just cancels out. So r squared is 13, giving you that r is root 13. Clever, right? Now we're going to use the other trig identity that sine divided by cos is tan. So again I'm going to use these two equations and I'm going to do sine divided by cos. So I'm going to do equation 2 divided by equation 1. Just be sure you get them the right way round. That's a common mistake. Equation 2 divided by equation 1, so we've got 3 over 2. The r's will cancel and that leaves you then with tan, which is what we wanted. And now we can solve that to get inverse tan of 3 over 2. I'm in degrees here, so I've got 56.3. So there we go, we've done it. We've found that r is root 13 and alpha is 56.3. It's always nice to check that your work's right and you can do a quick check on these. Um, all you need to do is pick any odd value for x. So I might pick for example that x is 40 and plug that into my calculator. So do 2 sine 40 plus 3 cos 40 and on my calculator I get 3.58. And on this side I can do the same thing on the calculator, root 13 times sine of 40 plus 56.3 and again I get 3.58 and if you get the same value then you know you've done it right. 
Great, let's do one more of those to practice. This time we're going to use cos, and actually I've, I've kept the left hand side exactly the same as the previous one, just to show you that it doesn't really matter if you use sine or cos with the single expression, you could use either, um, as long as you get the sine correct in the middle. So when I expand this out, I'll get cos cos plus sine sine, because I want the plus. So in this single expression I have to have a minus, because remember the, in the addition formula the sine will change. So by having a minus there now, when I expand it out, it turns into a plus to agree with that one. So we're going to do the same as before, but use cos this time. So use the addition formula on there to expand that out first. Again, I'm going to do what's called equating coefficients. Same thing as before, we're going to square and add them together. And I actually get the same R as before, which is no surprise. But what will be different is um, the angle, because it will go the other way around now. So remember to get this the right way around. Tan is sine divided by cos, so now we'll do the equation 1 divided by equation 2. It's the other way around to before. So there we go, we found that r is, is again root 13, and this time alpha is 33.7. Great, keep practicing those. Um, what I'm going to do now is look at two exam style questions. So it will, an exam question typically will start with doing one of these as the first part, and then maybe an application, so solving an equation or finding a maximum or minimum value. So we'll do a couple of those now. Okay, so this exam question, um, first of all, the first part of it asks you to write this in this form. Um, typically they'll give you ranges, which are nothing to worry about really, it's just saying that R is positive. Because remember you get the R by square rooting, obviously you'd get two solutions when you square root a positive and a negative term. So they're just clarifying they want the positive form and the first acute angle when you do the inverse tan, so between 0 and 90. So they're nothing to worry about really, it's exactly the same as we were doing before. So let's have a go at that now. Do pause the video and have a go at this yourself. Great, so hopefully you got that using the same method as we looked at before, R is 13 and alpha is 67.4. Okay, we're going to look at a couple more parts of this question. The next part is to solve then this equals 2. Oh, and I should have written the range as well. Um, it's 0 up to 360. So again, we know we're working in degrees. Um, and the way to do this is to, in, if in the first part, You've done all this work to write it in this form, so clearly you're not going to use that, you're going to use the new form equal to 2 instead. And now that looks a lot friendlier to solve, because now you can move the 13 onto the other side. And inverse cos. Now, it's important um, when you solve trig equations, as you know, to use the cast diagrams or the graphs to get multiple solutions. And it's important to do that at this stage before you undo the side, because it's at this point that we, we're doing the inverse cos. So you must get the multiple solutions now um, and get the first solution on the calculator and then the next solution using cast diagram or graph, whatever you choose. Now because those are both equal to theta minus 67.4, now I can add the 67.4 to those solutions. So they're the two solutions in that range. 
Great, we're going to look at one more part of this question. I found that um, people get a bit flustered by these kinds of questions, the maximum and minimum values, but they're actually pretty easy. Um, when you do maximum and minimum value, you just need to remember the max and min of sine or cos is either 1 or minus 1. That's the, the ex Those are the extremes of the graph, 1 and minus 1. Um, in this part, clearly we're going to use our new form again. So we're finding the max and min of this instead. And because this is a form of cos, it's going to fluctuate between 1 and minus 1. So if we're finding the minimum, it's going to be when it's minus 1, because that's the smallest it will go. And remember, when you cube a minus 1, it will stay negative, so it will still be a minimum value. So that's all it is. That's the smallest it will go, is 13 lots of minus 1 cubed. So that's minus 13 cubed which gives you minus 2197. Okay, beginning the same way as ever is putting this into the R addition formula. This time they've given us the range alpha is between 0 and pi over 2, so it's telling us there that they want it in radians. So make sure you switch your calculator onto radians now. And let's have a go at this. Brilliant, well done if you got those. Let's look at the next two parts of the question. Okay, again we've got an equation to solve here when it's equal to 3, so we'll use the new form equal to 3. Solving in the same way as last time by bringing the 15 down to the side and doing an inverse sign. Okay, I got the first answer on the calculator and then use cast diagram or graph to get the second. Now I'm going to take off the 0 0.93. When I take that off, I get a minus here. So because we're in the range of 0 to 2 pi, I don't want the minus. That so can discard that answer. Um, and because we're taking off quite a big amount, it's worth checking the next solution along because that might bring it into the correct range. So I'm going to get the next answer along by adding 2 pi, another revolution, to the first answer. Then I can take the 0 0.3, 0 0.93 off that one. And that does bring us into the range that we want. So it's those two answers. Great, well done if you're getting that. Now let's look at maximum and minimum values. Okay, this one's got a nice fun twist because it's written this slightly differently to what we've got up here and you're asked to find the maximum and minimum values of it. So what we'll do is, is use our new form. So this is 10 minus all of that. So we're just going to do 10 minus the new stuff. And to find the maximum and minimum values, remember again, it fluctuates, sine fluctuates between 1 and minus 1. So they're going to be the minimum values the maximum and minimum values, that will give us minus 5 and that one 10 plus 15 will give us 25. So there are your minimum and maximum. Brilliant! Well I hope that was helpful. Do keep practicing those and enjoy. Thank you for watching.